I think as a woman, I bring a, a very different feel to the funeral industry. As a woman, I believe you can do anything you put your mind to. Hello, my name is Bolani Okutoya Feita. I'm MD at LTJ Funerals International. We are a funeral services company. We provide comprehensive funeral services across Nigeria. I am a third generation funeral services provider, so I kind of fell into it. So my grandfather started as a carpenter in 1946. And my first memories of dealing with funeral services was playing in caskets and hiding in them in my grandfather's shop, probably around the age of five or six. So caskets and, and funerals have been things that have always been around. And then my father was a leading funeral director, was a real true pioneer in his time. Um, my father passed away alongside my brother and four of his other staff in, a, in an accident in 2013 and that's really kind of where there was a bit of a pause in our history um, and that's kind of where I found myself more involved in so when my father died I'd worked part-time for his company for maybe about 14 or 15 years when he passed away I ran his company for about a year and then I took some time off and set up LTG Funerals International in their memory. Okay. So the initial challenges I faced as a woman working in funeral services with clients and with staff, um, they kind of varied. I work in international business primarily for international business side of funeral services for about 14 years before my father passed away. And so, so I, I, it wasn't that I was, I was not, wasn't that I was not um, clued up about what the expectation was. It was just that I was not visible. So I did the international business kind of in the background. And for a lot of people, they were quite surprised. Many people thought that I didn't have any experience. So it was always a matter of, well, them understanding that I was quite an experienced person or perhaps maybe somebody that they didn't know. One of the things that um, I, one of the things actually, in celebrating International Women's Day, uh, I was on a panel speaking with a group of other leading women. And something that came out of the panel that I can never forget is that um, criticism always bows down to competency. And I think that's something that, I, that is very much of a defining thing with any work not just in funeral services, but as a woman. If you're competent and you're excellent at what you do, any critic must bow. Because regardless of what it is, excellence, criticism, they just can't work together. So I found that when people saw that, I, I was actually, um, I was actually very clear about what I did. I was excellent at my work. I think that overcame that. With working with people, I had to kind of gain their trust to have, for them to have the understanding that I knew what I was doing and I was very good at what I was doing. I think as a woman, you have to work extra hard. You, it, it's, it's taken for, it, people take it for granted that, oh, if it is a man, oh, you should be able to do this. You be able to, uh, there's a lot of men who, are, who can't even pick up a, a dead rat, let alone a full human being. So I think it's, it's very important with the work that you do and, and with the work that you do to be competent at it. And I think really the passion that I had, the drive that I had, had and the quality of work that I delivered are the things that overcame that for me. What has changed about the funeral services industry since between now and say my grandfather's time? You know, I have very fond memories growing up of my father and my grandfather doing the work of serving people. What we do, serving people has not changed. When you're doing funeral services, ultimately 
And the focus for us as a family, and that's the legacy that we have, is serving people. It always gives me, it always humbles me when I meet people now who would tell me that, you know, in 1950 this, this is what your grandfather did, in 1970 this or 1980 something, this is what your father did, did for me at a very difficult, difficult time. People will not remember what they paid, but people always remember the kind of level of service that you give them. So that hasn't changed. Serving people with compassion, serving people with commitment, that has not changed and will never change. But the things that have changed now is we're a lot more modern. There's a lot more use of social media, digital technology. There are different ways. Gone are the days where you wait for people to come to your showroom and then you show them you have this casket and this. Now, we do a lot of funerals where the first time we meet the fam families on the day of the funeral, especially post-COVID, there are so many funerals that we do, countless, where the first day you meet the family is the day of the funeral. Everything is done over the phone, using things like WhatsApp, using things like Facebook, Instagram. You communicate with people without having to see them. You know, we do a lot of funerals where the family is not present or the immediate family are not present. So we have to use things like live streaming and other ways of sharing what it is that is going on. Now we do, we, 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 one of the things for me personally is to make funerals more accessible to this generation. So on Instagram, on Facebook, we share pictures of our work, we share pictures of funerals that have happened across Nigeria across the range of things that we do purely because I, I found that it helps somebody who hasn't planned a funeral before. When they look at it, they can see people they can relate to. They can see people that look like them. They can see people that are normal like them, how they dress, how they look, what to expect of the ceremony. All these things are things that really help. And so for us as the next generation, these are the ways that we have changed the way we work and made it more efficient. We have people that are very educated in, before it was just people that didn't really have much else to do. Now, a lot of people are actually choosing to work. The biases that I face, well, first of all, people just can't, let me, let me, give you, let me tell you stories. So, for example, you go to, the, the biases range depending on where you are. So we do funerals across Nigeria, and in different parts of Nigeria, you get different reactions. When you go for a funeral, most people think I'm a relative because I'm dressed in, in a way that is complementary to whatever the family would wear. And that's also across the range of our uniforms. We have a wide range of different options. So a lot of times you have all these men and they will tell the, whoever is giving them instruction that, well, you have to go and tell our boss. And they will say, who's your boss? And they will say, it's me. And you can see the shock in a lot of men's eyes. They just can't comprehend that. Who is this young woman who is in charge of all these men? And then when they realize that the people are not taking any instruction, then they grudgingly come to me and say, oh, they want to say X, Y, Z. And so, so that, that doesn't shock me anymore. It used to shock me before. Um, sometimes people talk over my head because they just think, oh, you can't be the one in charge. Call me the person who is in charge of the company. Um, so that's a bias that we face uh, sometimes. But to be honest with you, I operate with very much of a tunnel vision. I don't really look around. So there's a lot of things that are probably happening and things that people would say that I don't pay attention to because my focus is serving people, serving families. And if a family chooses us, most of the time, by the time they are doing their booking and they're carrying out the process, they, they probably met me, had some interaction, and so it's not a problem at all. I think as a woman, I bring a, a very different feel to the funeral industry. Our uniforms, our look, our feel is immaculate. Most of the time, we are the best dressed in any vendor that you would have. Because for me, as a person, I think the way you dress is very important because it's also the way you'll be addressed how you present yourself is not it's not the most expensive but really thinking th things through the caskets that we have the services that we have we think across the range of how would it look so how would you choose a car that will complement a uniform that will complement a casket 
how you choose your flowers, all those kind of things that are almost like a softer feel really can help you put together something really beautiful. And I think as a woman, I see that and I bring that in. As a woman, I believe you can do anything you put your mind to. Let's keep pushing, pressing ahead to be the very best that we can. Together, we can break the bias.